Hey everyone, just a little pro tip on how to disconnect your gauges properly. Um, what I always like to do is I have a ball valve on my high side gauge, which currently is hooked to the liquid line. Uh, shut the ball valve as long as you make sure your hoses are all perched free of air, make sure the manifold's perched of air, and I, I usually pull it back through the low side when the system's running. Disconnect the low side gauge while the system's running, I shut the system off, let the pressure come down, and I disconnect the high side gauge with the ball valve closed. So I'm going to demonstrate that real quick for you. I already, I already purged the manifold free of air. I'm just going to make sure that these are shut. I'm going to open my high side. Make sure your ball valve's closed. You don't want to shoot that liquid right back to the compressor. You want to just let it bleed in slow. So crack it, you'll see the pressure go up, pressure on the other side go down. Once it comes down, I just open it a little more and just hang on a couple seconds. And I'll shut all my gauges. Jumper off. Just give it a minute. No, not really a minute, a few seconds. We'll disconnect all these first. Temperature probes. Barely lost the thing. Now I know some people like the low loss fittings, which prevent any for for the most part any type of refrigerant loss when you're taking your gauges off. This is the way I've always done it. It's just kind of my preferred method. And you know, really you don't lose much. What's left in the gauge is just vapor at this point. So it's the way I like to do it. Low loss fittings are great too. So it's really up to you, it's personal preference. But you know, not having a ball valve on there, then you, you have a full charge of liquid refrigerant in that hose that you lose. So this is how I like to do it. And figured I'd show it with you guys. All right, I'll see you in the next one.